Today we're going to be taking a look at the three MHS or Modular Handgun Systems trial guns that I currently own. The FN 509 Tactical, the Beretta M9A3, and the Glock 19X. And I'm going to kind of go over, if I had to pick one for the military, uh, what I would pick based on carrying the old M9. And my, my opinion on which one is the best one for the consumer, the end consumer. So we've all benefited from the MHS trials uh, to some extent. There's been a lot of cool innovation in design. And if you're a fan of FDE guns, uh, like I am, or baby crap brown, uh, as some people call them, then you know that the options have definitely uh, increased, if that's your thing. Before we go into that, I want to give a super special shout out to uh, Patreon supporters. So, I never really felt right plugging my Patreon uh, super hardcore on the channel because, I mean, I'm doing this. Um, you guys are watching it. A lot of you guys are into guns. You've got your own ammo to buy, your own household expenses and things like that. And I never really felt right plugging it super hard. And now even more so with everything going on with COVID-19, people out of work, furloughed, laid off, things like that. I really didn't want to plug the Patreon. I have put links in the description. Uh, if somebody stumbled across it, then they were more than, obviously more than welcome to help me out. That's awesome. That is how I pay for memory cards, camera batteries, uh, ammunition sometimes. So I don't have a lot of Patreons and that's fine. I'm going to keep doing this whether you guys help me out or not. Uh, but I feel like the people that do saddle up and help me with the expenses that go into making these videos that means more than I can ever tell you I know firsthand uh, how tight money can be especially for us average guys so I appreciate that so I want to give a special shout out to Roger uh, Chris Barrett Landon Wells Timothy Gunnels and Dawson Daniels for helping me out uh, you guys are awesome I really really appreciate your help that means the world to me uh, Oh, YouTube ad revenue, that there, is a thing. Um, I get more than I thought I would get being a gun channel, but still not a lot. Uh, any of you guys that are YouTube creators, you guys know that. So it's really awesome when you guys help me out with that. But that's enough about that. There will be links in the description on my videos if you're so inclined, but please do not ever feel like you have to do that. Um, I'm going to find a way to keep making content for you guys regardless, but it does help me quite a bit offset the cost of some of this stuff. So as I said, I don't have all the MHS guns, so I know some folks are going to say this is an unfair comparison right from the start. Um, and you're right, I don't have the access to the time, ammunition, or all the firearms that were entered into the MHS trials. I have shot SIG P320s, I have shot the M17, um, so I have a very limited opinion on that gun. I still want to pick up an M18 eventually because it's kind of become my pet project to have a collection of the guns that were in the MHS trials, at least the ones that are available on the commercial market. So I'm going to kind of go through uh, each one that 
in the order that I got them. So first is going to be the Glock 19X, uh, just to show you guys that it is clear. Take my little PL <laughs> Mini 2 off there. So this gun I have uh, between four and 5,000 rounds through. I have shot it a lot. This was a carry gun for me uh, for a long time. It's held up well. It's, it's a Glock. Uh, it shoots about like you would expect a Glock to shoot. It's going to go bang uh, every time. I've had two failures with it and both were using uh, steel cased ammunition. They one failure to eject and one failure to feed. Uh, other than that, that's been it. The gun has, at least by my recollection, uh, and I tend to keep notes on malfunctions, especially on guns I'm reviewing. So, you know, unlike normal Glocks, you get metal sights right from the factory. You have this awesome coyote tan color, and, uh, you know, there was a little bit of controversy, or a lot of controversy, I should say, because it has the 19, uh, Glock 19 length slide and the Glock 17 length grip. So a lot of people hated that. Uh, I haven't had an issue with it. Now, when you're concealed carrying this gun, the grip or the butt is often the hardest part to conceal. For us appendix guys, uh, you can carry a pretty big gun appendix this way. How far down the gun goes is going to be dependent on your uh, anatomy, if you will. So, uh, the gun is, has been awesome, and actually, all the holsters I use to carry these guns are Lucky Coyote Kydex. So, I've got a video coming soon on Lucky Coyote. Um, I did a review on the first one I had, which is this one, but I've got a more in-depth video coming as I've dealt more with that company. I don't get anything from that video, just so you guys know. Uh, do, do clue in, or tune in, I should say. Get a clue and tune in. Um, they're a great American veteran-owned company. So, I've carried the gun. I've loved the gun. Um, it's been reliable. If you're a fan of Glocks, then, then you already know about the 19X second one I got doesn't even look like it was when I got it. Uh, this is a Beretta M9A3 and no round and chamber magazines clear. So I have done a little bit of work. I have a video kind of going into that a little bit more detail. Uh, there'll be a link in the description. There'll actually be links in the description to uh, videos pertaining to these guns. So feel free to check those out. Uh, I did change the grips. Um, I wanted a little bit more purchase and I wanted something in between the, the rubber humpback grip and the slim vertex panels that came on it and I like the look of these and I did do a G series conversion for you guys that are uh, unfamiliar the standard Beretta decocker system is if the hammer's cocked when you pull this down it stays down and it acts like a safety uh, G series basically spring loads this decocker and makes it return back up and turns the gun into a decocker only uh, that's my preferred way to carry I don't like safeties on any of my carry guns but particularly on my double action guns guys can see it does have a different barrel this is a standard m9 barrel it came out of my regular beretta m9 and it reduced the barrel length by just a tad but that little bit is enough that when i put it in the holster uh, the barrel doesn't stick out down here so the other barrel does and for you appendix carrying guys you know that spreading force over a wider area is uh, a lot more anatomically comfortable so that's why that barrel's in there uh, i left it in there for this video just to show you guys, the parts interchangeability with this gun and the other Berettas is phenomenal. And I haven't suffered a lock of, uh, loss of accuracy or anything like that. So, my last gun that I got uh, in the MHS trial category is going to be my FN 509 Tactical. No mag and no round in the chamber. I just recently finished the full review on this gun. And uh, if you guys have watched it, you already know how that went. So... This one, uh, with the exception of the Hollow Sun 507C up top, is in its stock configuration. So these are um, awesome guns. I, I like all of them. I'll never get rid of any of them. But all of these were entrance, or as close to the entrance in the MHS trials as we can get on the civilian side. Obviously the Glock had a manual safety, and there may have been color differences with some of the controls and things like that, but overall, these are, for the most part, what was entered into the MHS trials. Uh, Beretta did also have the APX gun. I don't have one of those. Uh, CZ had a variant of the P09 and I believe the P07. Uh, don't have those. Or, obviously, the M17 or M18. Obviously, I carry the M9. I have an M9. I've got pretty extensive experience shooting the M9 and Beretta you know, 92 series. I My vote, I'll go ahead and tell you guys, would have been to go with this one. Um, now I know that the SIGs are optics ready and I think that will be a 
feature that gets brought into use maybe with some some special operations guys or special task force things like that but across the board i think this would have been the way to go they were sticking with a nine millimeter cartridge anyway uh, you have stock rooms and stuff i'm sure filled with beretta parts that largely work on these guns so from a financial aspect i think it would have saved money in the long run going with this you do have the rail up front for lights and lasers you do have dovetailed front and rear sights and the threaded barrel that comes in it it is set up for suppressors also with the vertex style and the grip options you're going to fit more shooters hands and the double action trigger pull was much improved with the m9a3 so that's my vote there that being said uh, a glock with a manual safety is kind of hard for me to imagine um, the manual safety was specified in the MHS trials. I think that that, depending on how that manual safety worked and how reliable it was, a Glock would have been a hard choice to pass up, I think. A Glock service record with reliability and other militaries, their contracts, law enforcement contracts, uh, they're, they're pretty familiar, familiar with the government contract game. And these guns are not that expensive, I'm sure, on the wholesale side of things. So I think this could have been a solid contender as well. And the gun, I'm going to have to say, uh, oddly enough, um, is my favorite out of the three that I have that I do not think should have gotten the military contract would have been the FN 509. And I say shouldn't have. It didn't, obviously, get the contract. And my reasons for that are based on a couple things. You had a lot of issues with the first 509s that came out with the striker assembly breaking. Um, that's not good. Mine hasn't had any issues. I follow the FN 509 Facebook group. I do that with a lot of guns that I get to review just to kind of weigh my sample size against other people's. And I take it, I don't take it as gospel, but it does kind of help highlight some glaring issues with firearms design. That being said, the gun is ergonomic. Um, I love the gun. From a military point of view, I'm not sure how much the threaded barrel or the optics ready capabilities are going to factor into things. I think it's an easy gun to shoot. Uh, this one does not have a manual safety. I'm sure the MHS one did, I think. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'm sure I'll put something over this video. I'll do some more fact checking on that. But these guns are expensive too. Um, they're right up there with the Beretta in cost and there are no parts commonality between this and the existing service sidearm. So, you guys know that out of the three that I have, I give this my recommendation for what should have won the MHS trials. From a civilian uh, point of view, I think that the Glock 19X uh, is an awesome, awesome option. I've carried one for a while. I've got friends that have carried them. I've got friends that still carry them. They're great guns. Uh, like I said, if you're already in the Glock world, um, then yeah, it's a no-brainer to me. You get metal night sights from the factory, you get one flush fitting 17 round mag and then two with the plus two extender, so two 19 round mags with the gun uh, in states where your capacity is not limited. And for you guys in the other states, I'm sorry. For the Beretta M9A3, uh, you get some pretty awesome features. You know, you have the rail for lights and lasers and um, you know, if you're somebody like me that believes that you should carry a gun with a light, then this gun is set up well for that. The sights are tritium night sights, so that is definitely awesome. You have a double action, single action configuration, which I know some people hate, some people love. I happen to be a fan of it. And you get some pretty awesome accuracy, especially shooting single action. You've got just a lot of features on this gun uh, for the money, as well as just having a genuine you know, Beretta. I'm a big Beretta fan, so I realize some people aren't, and that's fine. You get three magazines with it. i got to figure out which mags are what. Three 17 round mags. Now, interesting note, regular Beretta 92 or M9 mags will work with it, and they're limited to 15 rounds. These 17 round mags, you get three, and they have a PVD coating. They're slick. They basically shoot out of the gun when they're empty, so that's awesome there. The FN 509 Tactical uh, is actually my current carry gun, and I really enjoy it. The only downside to it for me is you have one flush fitting 17 round mag and then you have two of these 24 round mags which stick out a little bit the only downside here for carry is that if you are also like me and you prefer to keep a spare magazine on you when you carry um, this is a lot easier to conceal than the 24 rounders that being said the way i dress uh, typically this isn't an issue there are times that i have to work pretty hard to conceal the 24 round mag that being all being equal though um, these aren't that expensive all things being relative uh, you can pick one of these up I want to say 40 or 50 dollars 
all steel mag. I've never had an issue with FN mags. Obviously, if you are a person that wants to run a miniature red dot sight on your firearm, you are going to have to contend with um, which guns are optics ready. You know, the Beretta, just the design of the gun is going to make it pretty hard to mount one on here, especially if you want to retain that uh, rear sight. Just, I, I wouldn't put a red dot on this gun. Obviously, Glocks, you can get milled out for a red dot or use a dovetail adapter. Not a big fan of that either. But this one is optics ready, so from a concealed carry point of view, if you want to carry a red dot while you carry a gun, um, the 509 tactical, tactical is there. It supports most of the major red dot models now. The SIG M17 and M18 are also optics ready, but the little plate uh, that comes off to mount the optic also includes your rear sight. So just be aware of that. Uh, whereas a gun like the 509 tactical, you throw a red dot on it, you have suppressor height sights that, uh, at least with the hollow sun, co-witness over the optics body so you can still get an iron sight picture if your optic were to fail or go down for whatever reason uh, with the sig m17 and m18 if you put a dot on the gun uh, unless there's some aftermarket feature i'm not aware of you are losing your rear sight all right got the glock 19x i'm using some 124 grain uh reloads plated bullets and we're just gonna see what we get at a distance of 20 yards get the gopro rolling down there All right, got the Beretta M9A3 loaded up again with some 100, oh, these are actually uh, factory loads, 124 grain factory loads, and distance of 20 yards. Got the GoPro rolling down there. Uh, fire 10 shots, see how we do. Fire the first one, double action, you know, just because that's how the gun's designed to be fired. All right, same thing. We got the FN 509 Tactical. Uh, target's 20 yards away. We're gonna put 10 rounds. See how we do. This one's cheating a bit because it's got the red dot on it. So that's that. That's just kind of my opinion on that. Um, you guys feel free to check out the videos I have on these firearms. It's going to be in the description. I love all these guns. I'll never get rid of them. And tell me what your opinion is in the description on who you think should have won the military handgun trials. And if, uh, if you were to pick one of these guns for your carry guns, which one would you pick and why? Stay safe. Keep shooting. I'll see you next time.